MC Sullivan has been with us before, so we're thrilled that she's back again. And she's the director of the Initiative of Palliative Care and Advanced Care Planning in the Archdiocese of Boston. And to Today, you are here with us again to talk about some very important things. How are you doing? I'm great, and thanks for having me back. It's wonderful to be here. You know, when you talked about the prayer box over there, yeah. you probably didn't know that you'd end up at the beginning of the show talking about <laughs> you. No. But here you thanks. are. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the basics. Exactly what is palliative care? Thanks. Thanks. It's a great question, and I think it's a misunderstood term. Yeah. Palliative care is a model of care that is really appropriate for anyone facing serious or chronic illness. It involves the creation or development of an interdisciplinary care team and that care team can address both the physical symptoms but also the emotional needs the psychosocial impact of disease on the patient and family and also and most importantly spiritual needs I think anybody who is facing a chronic or life limiting illness they kind of bounce around from the pains and symptoms to something that is really untalked about but very real, occasional depression, occasional feeling of abandonment and thinking, am I being punished? Is God have it in for me? So we, we are in our humanity, all of these aspects, and palliative care addresses all of these aspects. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you could expand on that, MC, too. Uh, I know a lot of people think of palliative care as, as end of life uh, type right. thing. Uh, maybe talk about that, um, the chronic conditions and, and how important a, a team Great. Uh, is. Thanks. That's th a, a huge part Part of the misunderstanding about palliative care is that is the same as hospice care. Yeah. And I'd love to have bumper stickers that we could <laughs> distribute to everybody everywhere that says all of hospice care is palliative care, but not all palliative care is hospice care. Mm -hmm. And it goes exactly to your point, Kevin. Palliative care should be initiated. It should be offered to patients at the moment of diagnosis of a chronic illness. Anything that we say is life limiting. Most people hear life limiting and they think, oh gosh, time is short, and it may be. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, chronic illness is something that people have to live with throughout their life. And we hope that is years and decades of living with illness. And so we, we also have another bumper sticker, ideal in bumper sticker <laughs> phrases, because they're easy to remember. Palliative care can be started at any age, at any stage of illness as soon as it is diagnosed. So for example, a seven-year-old who's diagnosed with diabetes, juvenile diabetes, their whole life is going to be impacted. So when we talk about life limiting, we don't in that sense mean that time is short. We mean that perhaps there's functional limitation. Maybe there are things that you have to think about constantly that the person next to you doesn't have to. So in the case of a, a little kid with diabetes, they have to worry about their diet. They have to think about their insulin. They wonder, will the pump work best for me? And these are things Things that the children in their classroom don't worry about. Mm -hmm. So there are these kind of functional limitations that, you know, we use the word limitations, hopefully they won't be. With good palliative care, they'll just be issues to manage, things to think about, get done, and move on. Let's talk about the family. You hit upon it a, a little bit, but as you were saying it, MC, it made me think of my, my, only, my own situation with my family and my mom uh, during her, her last few weeks with us. There's a ripple effect. So here's my mom that we all love and we all care for, uh, obviously heading towards the end of her life. And you know, I see my dad who's, who's really suffering mm -hmm. and my sisters and all of our family. H how, do we, how do we help them too through all of this process? I'm so glad you asked that. I, I kind of cavalierly mentioned psychosocial aspect mm -hmm. of palliative care, dealing with these relationship issues. Mm -hmm. As human beings, and this is part of our Catholic Christian anthropology, we're defined by our relationships. We're supported by them, we're nourished by them, we grow and develop because of them. So the wonderful thing about palliative care is that while it's patient driven by the needs and the preferences and the values of the patient, it's family oriented. Because we understand that without these supportive uh, relationships being intact and the people who are those relationships being healthy themselves, then this is not going to work. And so we talk to patients' families as much as we do patients. We wonder what their needs are. What supports do they have? What are their emotional needs and concerns? You know, if you look at long marriages, when one of the partners becomes ill, it, it has a profound impact on the spouse, on the children. If you look at a sick child, a sick child can draw all the attention, kind of suck the air out of the room, and what about the other siblings? So palliative care looks at all of that. Who is and who are, because sometimes it's one, but more often there are many people who make up our support network. Mm -hmm. And so when we get sick, 
they suffer as well. How do we take care of them? And palliative care proactively addresses these needs and then as problems arise, as issues come up, we try to talk to the folks involved mm -hmm. and support them the best we can. A, a good death ultimately for all of us is a group thing. Yeah, I agree. It's a group thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We talk about uh, health care too and how, how important it is to, to advocate uh, for, for yourself and for your family as well. Maybe if you could speak on that too, if somebody gets a, a diagnosis, um, you know, how they go about you know, receiving palliative care. That's a great question again. Gosh, you guys are full of great questions. You did your homework. Uh, many people ask that question. In fact, palliative care is the fastest growing medical subspecialty. So at the time of diagnosis, most providers will mention it. But some don't, and some still misunderstand that it is not just about end-of-life care, that it is about the care of anybody with a serious illness or a chronic illness. So what we're trying to do with our initiative, and this was a brilliant idea of Cardinal O'Malley, is to inform people to, to just ask, mm -hmm. well, this sounds serious. Is this something that palliative care would be helpful with? Mm -hmm. We have seen such a growth in the availability of palliative care programs and palliative care specialists. Uh, four years ago, five years ago, the, the availability was about 30% around the country, and that was true in the Commonwealth, even though we are the medical mecca of the world. Uh, now it's 93%. Mm -hmm. So if patients ask, they should be able to get the referral. And if people are interested, where would they go? They could call the Archdiocese at, um, I'll just give the main number sure. and ask for me, 617-254-0100. Well, MC, as always, thank you so much. I had more questions, but we've run out of time. <laughs> Maybe another time. We'll talk again. <laughs> we'll take good. a short break, Thanks. and when we come back, we'll, we'll hear Kevin on the news. We'll be right back.